Well, let's disturb before we go. The vision of a Lord will shine forth. For a while, my troubled eyes to peace be restored. I felt the murderer's teal plunged within the traitor. They, um, the monologue that you just saw is a line from Athalia. We need your microphone. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I didn't think about the costume. Are you going to start your slides? No. So. I was saying, the, um, the monologue that you just saw is about Athalia. Uh, she was a queen so consort of Judah and the main antagonist to the, to the life of King Joash, the boy king. My, um, Finding God in Bibliodrama. Finding God in Bibliodrama. Uh, sorry. So, my presentation is Finding God in Bibliodrama. It's about a, um, a church curriculum for children 16 to 18 years old. Now, my presentation is about the use of Bibliodrama as a constructive interpretation of the personal narrative of the Christian education. Now, bibliodrama and theater can teach young people to worship God using their body, mind, and soul. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, Now, experiencing the Bible with the use of the whole body, mind, and soul is vital to the Christian experience. God precisely needed us to be flesh through Christ because this is how we could reconnect to us. My question was, why does the youth feel alienated in church programs and they are left to wander in the afternoons? My context, Kenya Community Church, has about 20 teenagers uh, ages 16 to 18. And because they're too young to be called adults and too old to be called children, sometimes they're, they're left out in, with the programs. And so raising children, um, it's a communal duty that... Uh, so what's going on? Not working. Okay, now it's a challenge to convince teens to do anything, my friend. Um, it's a challenge to, to do them to do anything, but when I tried to get them into a play in 2017, I was amazed to see them um, get together and create the scenes as their own. When kids feel like they're left out in the church, at the church, maybe they only need to be in that space where they could worship and experience the true worship instead of just sitting down. Spiritual but not religious. This is a very common phrase among these ages. But studies found that these teens have open viewpoint on religion. But the few that are caught up in spiritual seeking, are, they look, they're only few that look for higher meaning. With faith experiences in the background, non-religious peers are just as good and as happy as their religious friends. Religious active teens, however, are quite different. Why is this happening? While religious religions are preoccupied with the symbols of the body, there is a conflict in Judeo-Christianity. Now, um, we're created in the image of God, and yet God has no body? Young people are still discovering their definitions of their faith, so this cannot happen without the body. Now, why is this all happening? To expose the innermost self publicly can be a painful experience and not meant to the eyes of the world. But this mental discipline and physical exercise can be a spiritual act. 
Bibliodrama relies on the verbal and then the nonverbal. And then we connect to the text becoming living words, as Martin Luther said. The goal is always honesty and emotion. But in order to achieve this, performance after performance, the, the, the actor must hold of something substantial. Otherwise, it could be mechanical. To make performance the most beautiful in the eyes of the divine creator, we need to understand. We need to understand that The Bible is not a theological dictionary, but it's a theological drama. Now, teaching exists for the sake of worship, to glorify God with our actions. Our duties as leaders is like the Greek term parakletos, which is to be alongside another. As the mentor sees in the learner and the learner sees himself in the mentor, both of them outgrow one's need for mentoring, and then the relationship flows afterwards. It becomes a gift for them both. Now, what ought to be going on? Like love, faith works in the same manner. Um, passionate faith formed among teens developed through stories. Now, bibliodrama becomes the medium in manifesting the word as incarnate. Rather than programs, though, relationships should be the uttermost ideal. Now, this I learned from all these research experience. Teaching is a sacred duty. God builds a relationship with us the same way through scripture. If we don't allow ourselves to be just as vulnerable in embodying the truth of the word into action, as, a, as none of these, none of these programs, whatever we're making, would be possible. So while bibliodramatic faith experiences are held, experiences are magnified. It's the process of understanding the text or its application rather than the stressing of relationship between faith experiences. Now God's drama, bibliodrama, is the process of God's incarnation of the word logos becoming flesh. When young people enable themselves to reverse roles with the biblical characters, they learn to understand each other and empathize with them, and thus learn from it. A whole new world. While their self-identities are also highly important among this group, working together and caring with adult learners, uh, that should be the, the, main, the main concern. Now, bibliodrama explores the possibility possibility of looking into a world that's beyond us. And bibliodrama begins with the mind of the reader discovering what biblical stories left out and imagines ways in which they might be filled. It's important that the mentors teach with relevance, using grounded biblical truths, and coupled with an honest prayer and devotional life with, with the teenagers that you're dealing with. Now, how might we best respond? When I think about my students, and every time they share in our weekly sessions, uh, we also do Zoom sessions with them, I, I, I think of it as a, a sacred trust that they're giving to us. They're, they're, they're giving you their, their, their attention and their trust, and such that they're engaging and shaping their faith through these stories. When I ask myself, why does the youth or are youth in my church felt sometimes that they're not heard and then that, that they don't belong in the church. I resolved that while methods such as bibliodrama or other things are beneficial in engaging the youth battling with identity issues and other things, the commitment of the parents and the adults and all the leaders they have at church is you know, it's the most important. Um, let me just read this. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, by the mercies of God, we ought to present our bodies as living sacrifice for holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship, to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind, that by testing we may discern that this is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Thank you for listening.
have just a technical question for 